a particular idea on this centenary of the school, although it wasn't until October that um, the first girls arrived on October the 10th, and the week before that, the first sisters. Nonetheless, 100 years is something we can't let go. And it's appropriate to celebrate it today because I'm very conscious reading your mission statement when you talk about Christ being at the centre of this community, Christ in the sacraments and in the Word and in one another. It was very powerful statements. Uh, so thank you for your invitation. It's good to see the girls. I know you've got to be here. So. <laughs> but um, thank you for your presence. Um, parents and staff, uh, sisters, especially uh, sisters from France. I'll call them twice by the young menu. I'm on the day, on the you said, I'm on the Brighton. I think I'd better get back to the English. <laughs> but it is good to see you. Thank you very much indeed for your presence. Uh, so many people here, my brother priests from the area, and um, other uh, colleagues from sister churches sitting behind me. Uh, very grateful that you've come to join us. Um, so let's rejoice in what the Lord has done over a hundred years in this place. All the people who passed through and had their lives enriched by being here. I hope the girls who are here now feel that, that your lives are being enriched by your experience here, and you carry away from this, not just this day, but from your time here, uh, something very precious. So let's give thanks for all the people who have uh, worked so hard um, over a hundred years and made such a difference, and ask the Lord to bless us for the future. We acknowledge then that sometimes we've not done what the Lord has asked of us. And for the times we have not acknowledged God as Father and Lord of creation, Lord have mercy. For the times we fail to realize that Christ loves all of us, Christ have mercy. For the times we rejected the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord I'd like to say a special word to Uncle Five now who are leaving us. Because we're human girls, it's absolutely certain that over the years we have upset each other just a little bit. <laughs> so, on behalf of the sisters here and the staff, I'd like to say we're sorry and we're very sad you're going. <laughs> and perhaps now we could all offer each other signs of peace. <laughs>
Who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness? 
is not a thing. It's an event we do. We celebrate the presence of Christ among us. But if we're doing that, we need to think why we're doing it and what effect does it have. Why we do it is because Jesus said, do this in memory of me. Do this because every time you do this, you will make effective again the saving power of the death and resurrection of Christ. We do this and Christ in life comes effective through this to save us from our sins. That's why we do it. What effect does it have then? It saves us from our sins. But who does it save? Who does it save as we celebrate the Eucharist? Is it only us? Is it only the Catholics who have this privileged access to salvation? It would be a very sad story if it were. Is it only Christians who accept Christ as Saviour? Again, a small proportion of the world's population. And it means then that God's generosity, in first of all, in coming down to earth as man, and then giving his son to die on the cross for a few people, sounds extraordinarily extravagant and rather wasteful. Who is saved as we celebrate the Eucharist? The words of the consecration we will listen to in a few minutes are telling. They're very important. This is the cup of my blood, which will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Shed for you and for all, not just ourselves, not just those who believe in Christ, shed for you and for all. And the important implication of that, and very important in our world today, and it's crucially important, is that there is nobody in this world today who is not our brother or sister in Christ.
we think of this now as beginning and an ending, ending of your time here, beginning of a new experience. And now using the Easter light, the symbol of the risen Christ, we express what we feel, the risen Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. On behalf of the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, I offer you the light of faith. When you were a baby, someone held this light for you and named you as a child of God. Over the years, this flame has been fueled by the example of those around you. Now, like so many others before you, you must carry that light. For yourself. You will not find it an easy chance. The flame will flicker. It may even be extinguished for a time. But the most important thing about the flame of faith is that it is not yours alone. A lone flame cannot pierce the darkness, but many flames together can cast a great light. We think of all those who have gone from this school over the last hundred years, carrying that light. We pray that you will be faithful too. We are your past. We are your present. But you are the creators of your own tomorrows. Be people of faith and hope. Be dreamers of dreams. Thank <laughs> you. 
you're leaving, so you suddenly realise what a great place it is. Too late. Um, but uh, we do assure you about our good wishes and um, try and feel the way you feel today. Uh, a bit sad, perhaps a bit scared too, but uh, I'm sure you've got great um, grounding here to equip you for the future. So we ask God's blessing on you. Lord God, we ask your blessing on these young people as they step out to new horizons. Be by their sides, guiding their footsteps on the challenging road ahead. And we ask your blessings on this school, now and in the future. Amen. bring to the altar the flags of the nations where the sisters are established and from which we have vocations. France, Italy, England, Brazil, Ireland, Spain, Tanzania, Angola, Czech Republic and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thank mm-hmm. you.
my sisters and brothers and our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, may the bread and the cup we offer bring your church the unity and peace they signify. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, also be with you. and lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. At the Last Supper, as he sat at table with his apostles, he offered himself to you as the spotless lamb, the acceptable gift that gives you perfect praise. Christ has given us this memorial of his suffering to bring us its saving power until the end of time. In this great sacrament you feed your people and strengthen them in holiness so that the family of all humanity may come to walk in the light of one faith, in one communion of love. We come then to this wonderful sacrament to be fed at your table and to grow into the likeness of the risen Christ. Earth unites with heaven to sing the new song of creation as we adore and praise you forever.
remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their midst in the hope of rising again. Just pause for a moment and think of all those sisters who work here with you. Lord, our dear brothers, bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory to your Son, Jesus Christ.
us pray.